the day beautiful people people hope that all is well glory to God we magnify with you exalt you we praise you we honor you mighty God there's no God like you we lift you up Jesus be magnified be glorified be lifted up mighty Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach, we exalt you, we praise you, we honor you, we praise you, we honor you. There's no God like our God. There's no God like our God. How y'all doing, beautiful people? Listen, I wanted to share this with you all um, real fast. It's not going to be long at all share this with you There's two passages of scripture I want to share with you it's 3 o'clock in the morning where I am Central Standard Time listen some people think there's a competition there's no competition between God and Satan you know, um, most people look at it like it's a back and forth, but there's no competition. You know, he's on a whole nother, God is on a whole nother level. He created everything that you see, everything. He created everything. He created the angels. He created everything. He's a creator. And um, there's no back and forth. There's no, um, 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 it's not no equality, Satan and God. There's no competition. And so I just want to take a few minutes just to show you that there's no competition with our God. The God that you serve, the God that I serve, um, he's so powerful. He's so beyond. He's just letting things play out how they how they play out. So check this out. I want you to, um, I'm going to, it's two passages of scripture. Two passages of scripture we're going to go to. Only two. That's all we need. And um, our God is just, he's mighty. He's awesome. How y'all doing tonight? Hope all is well. I don't see anyone to comment, so I'm not sure who's on here. But um, this is... Um, so... There's two passages of scripture. One's in Matthew and then one's in Revelation. So um, Matthew 26, um, it's going to be verses 47 through 56. And I'm going to let this thing, I'm going to let it read it for us. Our God is so mighty. Our God is so mighty. Pull this up for you real quick. How's everyone doing tonight? Hope, hope all is well with everyone. If it's not well, it's going to be well. It's going to get better. One thing the word of God promises is that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them that are the called according to his purpose. There's no negating that. All things are working together for the good. So, I 
listen to this. Right? I want to show you how there's no competition between our God and everything any, anyone else. Say hey, Tamika, how you doing? God bless you. Um, um, Wilson, thank you. Thank you for joining. Appreciate you. Listen, I want you to listen to this. This is this is this is awesome. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For so this, this is, is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So this is right before his um, right before he he was crucified. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to jump for. I'm going to jump to verse um, 47. Now listen to this. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Now listen to this, people. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Now listen, this God that we serve, he said, Jesus said this. He said, don't you think that I can send, pray to my father? And he sent twelve legions of angels. Within a legion, there's it, it was with one legion. Um, when you look at the Roman soldier, it could be between four to six thousand, even sometimes even more. And so Peter was trying to defend the Savior by cutting off the, the guard's ears. Now, he said, put your sword up. He said, don't you think that I can send I can pray to the father and he will send more than 12 legions. That's between 72,000 or above angels for his rescue when it came right on the spot. But the Bible says this, it goes on and it says, but the scriptures, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Let, let's read this one more time. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Listen, the only reason that he allowed that to happen is so me and you can be saved. He could have prayed and 12 legions could have came up, was, was, was just waiting, would just wish, wish they could do something. And he wouldn't even allow it because how could the scriptures be fulfilled? If he would have never went to that cross, I wouldn't be saved. You wouldn't be saved. He had to shed his blood. Because without the blood, the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. There's no forgiveness of sin. So we would have still been in our sin. So he laid, he did not, they did not kill him. He laid his life down purposely. He could have prayed and stopped all of that. But he purposely laid his life down for me and for you. But that's not even, that's the point. That's always a point, but that's not even the point tonight. You know, the, the point that I'm making is, look. There's no t type of competition. Check this out. I want you to go with me to Revelations. Revelation chapter 19. Um, we're going to start at 19, but the verse is actually in here. Yeah, let's just Revelations 19. Let me go here. Let me go forward. God, God is just, he's beyond me. He's so mighty so magnificent um so it's actually in 20 but i'm gonna start we're gonna start at 19 let's see here um revelations 
19. Listen to this. People think that there's some type of competition like this, like a back and forth, like they're kind of the they're equal foes that's 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 just fighting and and trying to listen. Our God is 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 beyond that. But the only thing that's happening is the scripture, so the scriptures could be fulfilled. Listen to this. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Chapter 20. Listen to this. And I saw an angel. I want you to listen to this. Remember, Jesus just got done talking about he can pray to the Father and he sent 12 legions of angels. In one legion, there's about 6,000, even sometimes even more, could be even more. So he said, Don't you think I could pray to the Father? And right now, he sent more than 12 legions. That's close to between 72,000. Or 80,000 angels. It could even be above that. Right? So now I want you to see what happens here. This is Revelation chapter 20. And verse 1. Listen to this. Chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. Having the key of the bottomless pit. And a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon. That old serpent which is the devil and Satan. And bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless that? pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Listen to that. When it came time, when the time was fulfilled, God used one angel to take Satan up, to bind him, and to cast him into the pit. He didn't need 12 legions of angels. He didn't need 10,000 angels. He didn't need eight. To, now, 12 legions, he could have prayed, and 12 legions would have came at his beck and call. God used one angel. That's one of his creations, right? One angel took Satan, took him up, and bound him. Listen to this. Listen to it again. There's no, people want to think that there's a competition between God and Satan. There is no, listen, he stands no chance against our God. He called, he, he sends one angel to cast this, 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 this Satan into the lake, look, into, into the, the, the pit. Listen again, listen to this. Chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the box. Did you hear that? It says an angel. Why? That one. One, one angel takes the devil. One. So when he was being crucified, he said, I can call 12 legions of angels in each legion. No, it said more than 12 legions. So in each legion, in a legion in the army, in the Roman army, there was about 6,000 in a legion. So, so if he says I can call more than 12,000, if it was, he said more. So if it was only 12,000, that would make it 72. Um, uh, if it was 12 legions, that would make it 72,000 angels. But he said more than that, right? Would have saved him from being crucified. But if he would, he said, this, how can the scriptures be fulfilled? So he allowed that to happen. He allowed himself to be crucified so me and you can be saved. And some people, they, they're getting it mixed up thinking, OK, it's it's like an equal type of thing. You know, Satan is here and, and God is here and it's kind of a back and forth. Listen, there is no competition. Here we just read that we, we the, the um, this app just read that. One angel takes Satan. This this Satan that's been that's been that's been messing with us 
all of this time, but the scriptures may, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He takes one, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Come on, man. One angel? And you think that there's any type of competition between our God and Satan? There's no type of competition. I know the things that we go through and we think, oh man, the devil is bit. And, and I understand it. We could feel it. We know. But listen, there's no type of competition. So when you are serving the true and living God, know that you're on the winning team. Know that there, listen, when he said no weapon formed against you shall prosper, even when it looks like it's killing you, it's for the glory of God. They took Jesus, they slew him. Three days after he died, he got up from the dead with power. The importance of his death is because we could not fulfill the, we cannot fulfill the law. According to the law, if you offend in one part, you're guilty of all. Because we could not fulfill that, 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 that standard, all of us would have been bound to a burning hell. But Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah came. He walked the life without sin. He fulfilled the law. And then he said, look, we're about to do a switcheroo. The life, the righteous life that I live, I'm going to take it and I'm covering you. So, so when, when our sins had us, had us, had us just, just, just filthy, he took us and he covered our sins with his blood. That's the importance of the savior. That's why, that's why we call it good news. There's good news because he came and he died for us. It's amazing what he's done. And so I want you to know that once you believe on him, he forgives you of every single thing you've ever done. But then not only does he forgive you, he comes inside of you. He starts walking in you and he, he'll start transforming your life, transforming you in ways that you couldn't do yourself. The scriptures had to be fulfilled. When he died on that cross, because he never sinned, he didn't deserve to die. So he took our sins, my your sins, and he died on the cross for our sins. He took our penalty. But there's no competition. Back to the back to the point. There's no competition. He could have called twelve. He could have called over over seventy two thousand angels right then to save him. But he didn't do it because if he didn't die for our sins, we couldn't be saved. So he laid his life down voluntarily. He knew what he could have done, but he he no one took it. He laid it down. But look in Revelation. One angel takes Satan. One. Not the 12. Lead. He didn't call 10. He didn't call two. One angel took him and bound him with a chain and cast him to the bottomless pit. Ain't that something? Isn't that amazing? Our God is just, is beyond. He's too much for me. He, he excites me. He's just, you know, he's beyond me. How good he is. Hey, Annie, how you doing? So, um, Tanya, how you doing? Weldon, how you doing? Hope I said that name right. But, listen, our God is, so don't, I don't want you to think that, 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 that Jesus and 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 the devil is is his. There's no competition at all. None. He does not compare. That's why. That's why the scriptures glorify God so much. We need to glory. We need to magnify God. We need to. The Bible. There's a scripture where it says that 
When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were, was thankful. We need to glorify him. We need to listen the works that he's done in our lives. We need to tell people how good he is. And when the enemy comes, see the enemy comes, he's a deceiver and he'll come and he'll mess with you a little bit. He'll mess with your flesh. He'll mess with your situation. He'll mess with your, maybe your finances, maybe your, your children, maybe your, 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 your husband, maybe your, your wife. He'll mess with, he'll mess and it makes, it makes it look like, Oh man, look all this stuff. I'm listen, it's not even worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Don't give him no glory, don't give him no honor. The stuff that's happening, and there's some things that could have happened to us. Listen, I haven't been through what Job been through, but he went through a whole lot. But he would not curse God. The enemy wants to magnify himself. But in the midst of that, when a people of God will steady magnify the Lord in the midst of what they're suffering through, you glorify God and God is well pleased with that. He wants you to go beyond what you see and what your flesh feels. He wants you to go beyond it so you can be a witness for him. Because we got to be a witness that there is nothing like our God. There is no competition. There's no, there's no, um, 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 uh, there's no. There's nothing like our God. He takes even the bad things that happen to us, even the things we don't understand. He takes it and he works it together for our good. When the enemy thinks he's crushing us, they don't. He, did, he didn't know that when, when, when we were broken, we was going to seek God. And that caused God to move on our behalf. Because the Bible says a broken and a contrite heart, God won't despise. All things are working together for your good. The Bible calls us more than conquerors, not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We have overcome because of the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. We love not our life even unto the death as long as he is glorified. They don't understand it. There's a, there's a little, there's a, a, a saying. It says they, 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 they thought they were doing something when they, they buried me. But they, they didn't know that I was a seed. Sometimes the Bible, this is what the scripture says. Except a seed fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it will, it will bring forth much fruit. Sometimes the situations in your life look dead. Looks like nothing can, nothing's good's going to come out of this. But listen, the God that we serve, he is a God that he knows what he's doing. Trust him. Believe him, glorify him, glorify him when it when it pains your flesh, glorify him because the scriptures are being fulfilled. There, there was a time I asked God, I was like, God, because the scripture speaks about a time during the end time where the Bible says that um, for a time, time and dividing of time that he allowed Satan, he allowed the, the, the man of sin, son of perdition, he allowed him to change time. The, the, he would seek to change times and laws and, and he will overcome the saints. And I was like, I asked the Lord, I'm talking to the Lord. I'm like, God, um, why the last three and a half years? Why are you allowing him to overcome the saints? Why don't you know we, we, we've been going through and all this time. Why don't you allow like us to zap them and, and, and just, you know, the, just the power of God and just, just, you know, curse him or whatever. You know, I'm just asking, I'm asking God, why are you not allowing us to just totally annihilate him? You know, and you know what the Lord impressed on my heart? The Bible says this, if you go into um, Daniel, it says he will confirm a covenant with many for one week. The Bible says in the midst of the week, in the middle, he will cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease, right? So that week is not a week of days. It represents a week of years. So seven year period. The Bible doesn't say the great tribulation will last for seven years. It only says the great tribulation is going to be when the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel stands in the holy place. So that is actually in the middle of in the midst of the week, in the middle. So in the middle of seven is three and a half, three and a half, which represented three and a half year period. So during this time, you go into Revelation and it speaks about for three and a half years, he's going to allow two witnesses that's going to glorify him. They, the, the, the beast is not going to be able to touch him. But now the rest of it for that three and a half years 
this man of sin is going to arise. It's going to seem like he's prospering. It's going to seem like he's doing good. He's going to have a false prophet that's going to arise. And the false prophet is going to be able to do lying signs and wonders. And the, the, the beast of the world is going to wonder after the beast. The beast represented. The, the, and so this is getting into some deep teaching. I don't want to get too much. But if you go back into Daniel, the Bible says there was four beasts, right? It gave an interpretation of beasts. There was there was four beasts. One had the mouth of a lion, the lion that had eagle's wings. There was a there was one that had a form of a leopard. There was there was the bear, and there was one that was diverse than all the rest of the beasts. So it described them as beasts. When it gave the interpretation of what beasts mean, it says these beasts means kingdom. They represented kingdoms, just like the United States. We have an eagle. The Bible doesn't say animal like how we say it calls an animal a beast. So these beasts, which was four, right, four separate beasts. When you jump into the book of Revelation, it speaks about one beast. Now, this beast that it speaks about, the Bible says it had the mouth of a lion. It had the feet of the bear. The form of it was as a form of a leopard. And then it had seven heads and ten horns. All of those separate beasts or what we, we, we know the interpretation uh, are kingdoms. All of a sudden, it was only one kingdom that was united. Now, we don't really use kingdom unless you're from England. Nowadays, we use governments because we're here in America. So all of these different governments were united, but it wasn't united in a good thing. It was united. And the Bible says, and the dragon gave him power and authority, his seat. Meaning, so this particular government system was controlled by Satan. And that's why the rules and the laws that were being changed were going to be anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-everything that was righteous. You understand? So, um, so this is, this is the form when the Bible speaks about the beast. And so the man of sin, the son of perdition is going to be over this united kingdom. And so and the Bible says he will seek to change time and laws. And in, in Daniel, it says he's given power to overcome the saints. And I'm like, ask God, okay, why? Why, why, why are you allowing this God? I'm just asking. And God laid on my heart. Jesus, he was here. He walked a life without sin, powerful. They couldn't touch him, couldn't lay hands on him. He died and he stayed dead for three and a half days. He was in the earth three days. And the Bible says that after three days, he got up from the dead. Then I looked at the two witnesses, the two witnesses during this time for 42 months. If you add it up together, it's almost or around three and a half years the, they can't touch these two witnesses. The Antichrist is on the scene. He's persecuting the saints. He's persecuting the people of God. But there's two witnesses that he leaves that, that's, that he cannot touch. Satan cannot touch them. The Bible says as, 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 as often that they will, plagues, they, they would say plague come and they, he, they would turn water um, into blood, all type of stuff. They could not touch these two witnesses. Right at the end of their testimony, the beast that descending out of the bottomless pit finally kills them. The Bible says their body lays in the streets for three and a half days. They were so happy. They made a spectacle of it because the Bible says their body laid in the streets and they would not bury them. They wanted their body to lay in the streets so people could rejoice. And the Bible says they were rejoicing. They were sending gifts one to another because these two prophets, they tormented them that was on the earth. Because as these lying signs and wonders were actually happening, these 
prophets were like pricks in their side. See, you have people that were in the new age religion, right? That teaches this universalism that lines up with all coming underneath this one world system or governing government. You see it beginning now, this one world teaching, this one world government, this one world religion where all of these religions are putting them, themselves down and trying to combine. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. He said, no man come to the father, but by me. So now I cannot link up with someone that's saying that there's many different ways. If I really believe that Jesus is the only way I got to tell them about it in this new move. They don't want, the other religions don't want you to try to convert each other, right? But if I really believe Jesus is the only way, they're going to burn in hell. So I got to tell them if I really love them. A true Christian, a true man, a woman of God is going to stand that Yeshua HaMashiach is the only way. And these other religions, they'll acknowledge Jesus, but they don't believe he's the only way. And that will condemn them. That one thing will condemn them. The Bible says you must believe on me according to what the scripture says. He asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? He says, some say you're a prophet. Some of you say you're this. Some say that you're this. You know, you're John the Baptist. But he said, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son. When he said that you are the Christ, he's saying that you are the only way to be saved. You are the way, the truth, the life. You are not the false Christ. See, they, they, they operate under something called a false Christ, right? Jesus made a statement and warned us about them. He said, many will come in my name and say that I am Christ and shall deceive many. So in this new age religion, what they're teaching you is that we are all Christ. I can be God. You can be God. You are gods. We are all gods. We are all Christ. We can all ascend to where Christ was. And Jesus did not teach that. He said this. He said, many will come in my name and say, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And they don't even know they're doing what Jesus already warned us of. No, there is only one Messiah. There's only one Christ. There's only one way, one truth, and one life. Don't fall into this deception. People praying to their ancestors. They're, 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 they're getting into spiritualism. They're getting into, and it's, they don't understand that it's a demonic thing. It's a, it's a thing to, 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 it breaks down. See, if you're a Christian and you start believing this way, it'll start breaking down the, the foundation of what God wants. So when the man of sin comes and he said, he, the Bible says he will exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship. Not only Christians, he's going to exalt himself up against the, the Buddha, the Hindu. But by that time, their standards has been brought down to where they're kind of in unity already. So when this man of sin comes, they, they, they will readily accept him. You got to see what's happening in the spirit realm. They, it's, it's, being, it's being worked on so you can readily accept this, 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 this false Christ and this, this false prophet when he comes. He will exalt himself above all that is called God or worship. So this is what they teach him. So my, my question was, right? Why, God? Why are you allowing that? And so he leaves himself a witness, two witnesses that can't be touched during this time. But right at the end, the beast that descended out of the bottomless pit kills him. He was, see, they were like the conscience. See, it was too late for them. The Bible, the Bible says this. The Bible says when the fullness of the Gentiles will come in, right? The fullness of Gentiles will come in. Uh, the door is going to be closed. That door of grace that we have now is going to be closed. When the fullness of the Gentile come in, there's going to come in a different era. Why do you think that, the, see, the Bible says bless and curse not, right? It says bless and curse not. Um, there, there was sons of thunder that wanted to call down fire from heaven and, 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 and to, 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 the, to mm -hmm. consume these people. And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. He said, no, he said, don't, don't, don't do that. We're to bless. We're to, but in this timing, everyone is given over to the mark of the beast. Everyone is worshiping Satan. And he allows these two witnesses to put whatever plague they want on the earth. So you see a shift there. You see a shift where it's no longer just the mercy and grace, but it's judgment. They're declaring judgment. And it's like these 
Two witnesses are like consciences that's pricks in their side. They say you should have you should have obeyed God. You're you're actually following a devil, and 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 it's and it, that's why the Bible says, and these two prophets tormented them that was on the earth. Because once they receive the mark in their right hand and their forehead, there's no way for them to repent and say, oh, you know, I, 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 I want to serve God now. The Bible says once you receive that mark, you will burn in the lake of fire. And these two prophets, they were a witness that you should have been serving this Yahweh God, this Jehovah, this Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach. This is the only way. And they're going to be persecuting the saints. So it's going to seem like they're winning, except for these two witnesses. And then finally, the beast, our, our political leader that's speaking, the Bible says he will destroy many through peace. Isn't that backward? Is that an oxymoron? He will destroy many through peace. He will be a, a perfect politician, the things that he says. And see, when you stand for Jesus, you're going to be seen as an enemy because they're going to say it's because of these religions why we have division and murder on the earth. It's because of different religions and we're trying to unify different religions. But you saying that Yeshua is the only way, Jesus is the only way, is because of people like you why we have this, this division. And so we know Jesus is the only way, but this is going to be the stance that they're going to be taking because of the unity. He will destroy many through peace and they're going to look at you and say that you are the problem because of people like you is why we have war because of people like you is why we have the vision. You don't want to accept that we we're, we're in this new age where we're all in the same deception. We're all going to be gods. He, Satan came to Eve in the beginning, and he said, I want you to take up this tree of knowledge of good and evil. You are not going to surely die, but God knows that the day that you take of it, you'll be as gods. The same thing that made Satan fall from heaven because he wanted to be like God. The Bible says Jesus beheld Satan falling like lightning. And the same thing that caused him to be cast out and the same deception he, he gave to Eve and he said, you will not surely die, but you're going to be as gods knowing good and evil. And so that same deception, he is telling the people and saying, you are all gods. But even as, 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 um, as, as, as the book of, of Psalm says, it says, have I not said that you are gods, Lord KG, but you shall die like men. You got what you wanted and you lost what you had. So the same deception, he, deception he's feeding the people. And these two witnesses are like thorns in their side. He can't do nothing with them for three and a half years. Although he's passing laws, he, um, um, the saints are being killed. Not all of them are going to be killed because the Bible says they which are alive and remain will be called up together to meet them in the air. So now check this out. And I know a lot of, you know, I used to teach different things and I know there's a lot of theologians that may look at this and be like, no, we're going to be out of here. Um, no, I used to teach that. I used to say, oh, we're going to be gone before that. You know, in chapter four um, of, of Revelation, you know, heard a voice as a great trumpet and he was immediately in the spirit and that represented the rapture. No. The Bible says that we will be taken up at the last trump. They try to say that that's the last trump before the, no, 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 no. No, and I could go deeper into that. I'm not going to go deeper into that. Not, not on this live. But so I asked God. So back to this witness, right? Finally, at the end, the beast that ascended up kills these two witnesses. Their body lays in the street for how long? Can someone tell me? I'll pull it up for you. Someone tell me. How long did their bodies lay in the street? It's in Revelations. I'm gonna, just going to tell you. Their bodies, and you can look it up for yourself. Their bodies laid in the street for three and a half days. And they, people rejoiced and they were so happy. Finally, these people that were bothering us, that they were just, they were just too deep. Finally, they're dead. I knew our way was the right way. Now our, our faith is sealed, they think. And the Bible says, that's right, three and a half days. 
The Bible says that after three and a half days, the spirit of life from God came back into them and they stood upon their feet. And the world was, I could just imagine CNN and NBC and ABC and all and Fox News, all of them reporting and live stream people looking, man, have you seen that? They came back from the dead. They, see, in the Old Testament, God used prophets as signs. Not only did he use them to give signs and they used to make like a yoke and put around their neck to represent something. They made this and they made that. There's a time that one prophet, the Bible says that he laid on his side for a certain amount of days. And that represented how, how, how long Israel had been in this certain state. And then he laid on the other side. Another one, he, he, he took dung and he cooked with dung and it represented the, the, the how, 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 how um, Israel was defiled and it, it just was something that was unclean. And so God instructed him to do this stuff. So God used prophets as signs, their whole bodies, their whole lives as signs. He told one prophet, he said, I want you to go and you're going to marry this prostitute. And you could just imagine this man that's been living holy, that's been living righteous, that's been keeping himself, that's been, and, and God picks up and say, I want you to go and take a harlot. And he took the harlot in and made her his wife. And she came and, 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 and was with, with him. And then all of a sudden she goes back out and, 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 and is with other men. And so him doing that and putting this prophet Hosea in this situation, he felt the pain that God was feeling. So God uses prophets as signs. He used, he, ah, uh, it's, 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 it's something else. These two prophets, when their bodies were laying for three and a half days, they were actually prophesying that this Jesus that was in the tomb, this Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah that was in the tomb for three days and three nights, you should have followed him. He was the way. Then, Check this out. My question. When God allowed for the last three and a half years for us to be in great persecution, his bride, his bride is actually prophesying. Listen, what did the Bible say? It says for, for one week, right? In the midst of the week, he calls a sacrifice and oblations to cease, which that week represented a week of years. So the midst of the week is three and a half years which represented three and a half days. So for these three and a half days that he allowed us to look like we're overcome, we're actually prophesying that this Jesus that you have rejected, this church that God has allowed you to overcome, looked like you were overcoming. They were prophesying what I went through in my death, burial, and my resurrection. And at the end of these three and a half days, finally, the two prophets, they die and their bodies laid in the streets three and a half days. And they're prophesying that you should have listened to this Yeshua HaMashiach, this Jesus the Messiah. You should have listened to his bride, the church that were getting you, telling you that he was the only way. And now we stand as witnesses raised from the dead. And the Bible says, and they ascended up. There was a great earthquake and they ascended up into heaven, right? Before all of their eyes. After this, there was a great earthquake. And it says, then the last trumpet sound. You know what happens in the last trumpet. The trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised first. And we which are alive will remain will be called up to meet them in the air. And so will we ever be with the Lord. The Bible says the kingdoms of our God has become, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of, of our God and of his Christ. Our God is mighty. Don't think that Satan, the devil, is any type of, listen, you're on the winning team. I don't care how it looks for you. I don't care if it looks like you're dying. I don't care if it looks like every, all the situation is not working the way that I want. He is working all things. Together. He promises 
All things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. All things, everything. I don't care if it looks bad. I don't care. It's going to turn around for your good. I don't care if it looks good now. It's for your good. I don't care. You, you go through parts where you, you, you're on highs and then there's going to be parts where you're on lows, but it doesn't matter. All things are working together for your good. Everything, everything. Everything. You're more than conquerors. You can't lose because you're in Christ. It's them that's all in Christ, there's safety in Christ. There's safety in Christ. I don't care what you did yesterday, three minutes ago. You've been forgiven. His sins has covered your covered you, washed you. Listen, it says, Blessed is a man who God will not impute sin. He, his sins are covered. So Jesus has covered your sins. So right from the get, he's forgiven you of your sins and he's making you holy. He's doing what he wants to do inside of you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The enemy comes into your ear and speaks and says, oh, look what you did. You just cuss. You might as well just go back in the world. No, I'm not telling you to cuss. Don't cuss. But now the enemy comes and say, man, you just did that. You might as well not. Not just stop being a hypocrite. You don't want to be a hypocrite. And because he's trying to get you out of the he's trying to get you out of the safety of the master's hand. The devil is a liar. We ain't running out. The enemy can't plug us out. And we ain't gonna curse ourselves by, by turning our back on them. We are them, we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. No matter how it looks, we are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors, meaning he already did it for us. We just need a rest in him. All right? So listen, Satan had nothing on our Jesus. One angel took him. One. Not the thousands upon thousands upon thousands. I don't know how many angels there are. But one took him and bound Satan and cast him into the... Ain't no competition. He didn't, God didn't have to come himself say, I got to come and deal with you myself. He just he says one angel. Go over there and take care of that for me. One of his creation. So don't worry. The enemy always makes itself look big. Don't be afraid of him that's able to kill the body and after that, they, ain't have, they have nothing they could do. But rather, be afraid of him that after he kills your body, he could cash into hell. I serve the one that has saved me so I don't go to hell because of what he has done and I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to magnify him. You're going to glorify him. You're going to magnify him. Amen. Amen. This I want to thank everyone that jumped on with me and um. Hey, Monique, God bless you. Um, if I missed anyone, I don't know. I can't. Sometimes, you know, I don't see all the comments. Um, and some of the comments don't show up until after I get offline. So I'm not avoiding. I'm not missing anyone. Um, so God bless you. If you comment, I see you. If I see your comments. And if not, I'll address you um, afterwards. Listen, love you all. Keep us in your prayers. Um, seek God, seek after him. He's the king. He's the master of everything. Seek after him. He loves you. Um, stand in his presence. Prophets of God, um, apostles, um, um, evangelists, pastors, teachers, stay before the prince of God, the believer, stay before, stay before the prince of God. Let him pour into you. Let him use you. Um, just give yourself over to him and, um, stand, stand. He, He's making, there's a shift. There's a shift that's happening in the spirit realm. Um, I feel a shift. I feel um, there's, he's always calling different people, but I feel a call. I feel a shift in the call. And, um, and, and so be praying for me that I can stay in the council. The true prophets of God will stand in the council so they can declare the true oracle of God, what thus saith the Lord. Amen. And so, um, be praying for me that I can stay before God and and speak what he, what he wants to be spoken and um and I'll definitely be praying for you all um, love you all thank you thank you so much um, Annie appreciate you um, thank you Tamika thank everyone that joined this live um, um, hey Jamal God bless you blessings on you all. If I have not recognized you, so it wasn't on purpose, okay? All right. Love you all. It is, um, what y'all doing up?
It's kind of late. <laughs> all right. Blessings be upon you all.